Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Let me ask you, does hope have any value? Any weight? Any merit for he's now listen to verse five. Now may the God who gives perseverance and the God that gives encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another, according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may glorify with one voice the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Therefore, accept one another, just as Christ has accepted you to the glory of God. He says, for I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises that were given to the fathers. For the Gentiles, it says, and for the Gentiles to glorify God for for God's mercy. For it is written that therefore I will give praise to you amongst the Gentiles. I will sing to your name. I love this. It also says, and again, He says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples praise him. Now, Gentile, by the way, is anyone who is not Jewish. Anyone here a Gentile? We have all the the non-Jews. We are the Gentiles. But interestingly enough, Paul says, and again, verse 12, Isaiah says that there shall come the root of Jesse, and he who arises to rule over the Gentiles... In him shall the Gentiles, what? Hope. I love Paul. I mean, the absolute command that he has of the Old Testament. Some people ask me, how did you learn so many Old Testament scriptures? I'm going to tell you my secret right now. The pastor who mentored me in the gospel, John Higgins, he taught me right from the get-go. The best commentary for the Old Testament is what? The New Testament. Best commentary for the New Testament is the Old Testament. Because everybody wanted to know, what's the best commentary? Is it by Matthew Henry's or Haley's? What, you know? And he'd just go, it's right here. This book is complete. And, and guys would ask me years later, how did you get to know the book? So here's my secret. We just read, yeah, read it. <laughs> I know everyone tells me, Pastor, you've got to read this latest book about what it says about this, about the Bible. And I tell him, I promise I'm going to read all those books that tell me what the Bible says as soon as I finish reading this one book. I've been working on this sucker for 35 years. And it never gets dull. You, you know what's really weird? If you can be reading it, and you read a section, and you're like, I know I read this before, but when did they slip this verse in here? Because I didn't ever know this verse was there. Has anyone ever had this happen? Where you're reading the Bible and you're like, they must have slipped that in there because that wasn't there last time I read this. It was there. You just didn't notice, of course. But it's, it's, it's just one of these things. The Bible says that the Holy Scriptures are living. They're active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. They have this ability to divide asunder the, the, the bone from the marrow. That, that little difference, that subtle, subtle edge. The thought from the intent, it says, of the heart. The Bible has this power to really cut through the baloney and get down to the matter of our lives. And the scriptures bring hope, beautiful hope, just just never-ending hope. And you read the scriptures. I look at Paul, I said, well, here's my secret, how I learned the Old Testament. When I would read scriptures like this, we're reading today in Romans 15, I look at, The first verse he quotes there in verse 9. Therefore, I will give praise to you amongst the Gentiles. I will sing to your name. And I go, wait a minute, where's that? So it sends me on a search. Now, you guys are cheating because you live in this new age with cell phones and Bible programs. And you can go on our website on AmazingGraceKona.com. And I already put up five under Pastor Izzy's. The tab says Pastor Izzy's favorite links. I have five different Bible programs that are free. And all you have to do is type in a couple words. You know, you're like, oh, I want to find this verse. Where does it say this? I'll just type in, give praise Gentiles. 
And you will get this verse right away. It'll take you to 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 50. And you will find the verse, what Paul is quoting. Now, Paul doesn't say like it says in Samuel. The only one he said where it was from was verse 12, where he said, and again, Isaiah says. So I already, that, that, that already steered me to the right book. But years ago, we didn't have this internet. We had to pull out this book. It was about this big, and I kid you not. It was about this big, this wide, about that thick. It was called the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Anyone ever use a Strong's? This book tells you the main, not those, ands, in, at, little, little words. They didn't, that would take, I mean, Strong's would be like this thick then. But every time all the major words in the Bible are used were listed by alphabetical order. So you wanted to look up this verse, you'd go, let's see, i got to pick one word, okay? You don't get to do the multiple thing to zero it down. You have to start off with one. Uh, let's see, I'll look for give praise. I'll look up praise. Do you know how many times the word praise is used in the Bible? That was a bad idea. Let's don't do that one. Let's try Gentiles. <laughs> how many times do you think that's used? And somehow... Somehow, and it lists all the times the word Gentiles is used, and you've got to start reading from the Old Testament through the books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and you keep going, and you finally get to 1 Samuel, and you might find this verse. And then you turn to the chapter and read it in the context. That, and you realize that in just four verses here, from verse 9 to verse 12, Paul has quoted from four different passages in the Old Testament. So how did I learn where things were in the Old Testament? I'm an insatiable, curious mind. I cannot stand reading and not knowing where it came from. So I'm like, all right, found that one. Next, verse 10. Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Oh, that's going to be easy. Now you guys that have cross-reference Bibles are probably laughing at me because you're going, it says right in the margin. Deuteronomy 32:43. See, that's a real cheat. You can get these Bibles now that have these, you know, puts it right on the side, tells you right where it's from. You don't even have to wait. But, see, my curious mind wasn't satisfied with just, okay, now I know where it is. I had to go back and read in Deuteronomy this passage that talks, you know, God talking with the Jews about how he's going to include the Gentiles. I mean, for the days of Moses, the law. Deuteronomy, by the way, do the Old Testament with me, the first books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and what's the fifth book? Deuteronomy. The fifth book of your Bible, the Old Testament, is called the Pentateuch in the Hebrew Scriptures. The first five books, all penned by one fellow. Does anyone know who wrote the first five books? Who? Who? Moses, Moses that's right. He penned them. Up to then, the oral tradition, all these things were carefully passed on. It was a big deal, man. You had to learn all those genealogies. Who Methuselah had this guy, and that guy begat that guy, and you know, and how many years they lived, and all that. Moses wrote all that down. Thank God. But you read those things, and in the fifth book of the law, it's called of Deuteronomy. God says, "I'm going to include the Gentiles. I'm going to include." Them. Now Paul is. Is telling the church at Rome. Why would you tell the church at Rome? Gentiles are included. Anyone? Come on, help out with geography. Is Rome where a lot of Jews were living? No, Rome's where the Italians live, right? My favorite place. It's a, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the Italian book of the Bible right here. We're included. And this is the Gentiles, okay? So Paul, and next week we'll go into Paul explaining that he actually was called by God Call, his calling was to be the apostle to the Gentiles, which is a beautiful thing. But for right now, I just want to point out, we as Gentiles are included in the picture. Now, is that a big deal for back then? Did they count, you know, like, think back in the Bible days when Jesus came to the earth. He's a Jew, born in Bethlehem, that's in Israel, right? Raised there, going to the temple in Jerusalem. He's a Jew. And 
And Paul t even taught us salvation was first to the Jew, but then what? To the Gentile. We get included in the club. Now, why does he have to write this to the church at Rome? You think they got a lot of Jewish believers there? I submit to you they're probably mostly Gentiles. Probably really mostly Gentiles. Maybe a token Jew or two. But Paul's going to make sure that they know as Gentiles they're in the club. And not does, he doesn't just pick one verse to point out that truth. He goes from all the way what the Jews would respect greatly that he would pick a verse of Moses. Okay, I know you might not think this is a big deal, but I, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was trained under Gamaliel. He was, he was learned in the scriptures. He knew the Jewish way of, you know, impressing who's who in the zoo. But he picks first, first one. He picks one from Samuel. Why would you pick Samuel? I mean, is he, is he uh, anything important in the Jewish culture? Oh, by the way, if you don't know how the Jews arrange their scriptures, this probably doesn't mean as much to you. But when you become acquainted with it, you find out they have the first five books they call the Pentateuch. But then they have the historical books. Then they have the prophetical books or the poetical books. They're all grouped a little different than our grouping. They're all the same books we have. They group them by um, to topics, really, is the best way I can say. You know, they got the major prophets. You got Isaiah, Jeremiah, right, Ezekiel, those guys. You got the minor prophets, those last ten books we have of our, of our Old Testament. Those are all just little, they call them the minor. In the Jewish culture, they, they put them there. They put the poetical books, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. They're all one grouping in Hebrew Scripture. Now, the only reason I'm pointing this out to you is, let me, let me show you um, back again the quotes. First quote, Second Samuel. Historical. Second quote, Deuteronomy. Who would that be? Moses. That's a big one. You have to include him. Okay. Third quote. Psalms, which is the poetical. Next quote. Isaiah. Major prophets. Did he pick any? I mean, if you don't know this, it wouldn't mean a thing. But if you know Jewish culture, he's showing off his knowledge of the scripture. He's literally, he's covering every base, I would say, from Moses Samuel, the, you got, I got the historical accuracy for this thing. I got Moses included from the beginning. I got the poetical writings testifying that Gentiles will be included. And I got, and he picks Isaiah, my favorite. We have the same nickname, Is. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I have to wait till I see him when I get to heaven to see him. Do you call you Izzy or Is? <laughs> But typically in Jewish culture, Isaiah is, is shortened to is also. So I happen to like this guy. But he happens to be the, of all the major prophets, he's considered highest. So, so does he pick any good picks for pointing out to, to a bunch of Gentiles who don't even understand this is a big deal? You talk about picking heavy hit verses. Of, I'm going to show you that the Gentiles are included from the Jewish perspective. This is, by the way, very good for us as Gentiles to learn. Because sometime in your journey as a Christian, you might run into a Jew. And they might be like, you guys aren't really in the club. And if you only know four scriptures that I just pointed out to you today... And you point them out to your Jewish friend. Wait a minute. Doesn't your historical books in Samuel say that Gentiles are included? <laughs> I mean, you can really impress them. They, they won't even see it coming. You'll be like, and doesn't your scripture say in the, in, the, in the writings of Moses in Deuteronomy that Gentiles are included? And doesn't it say in the poetical writings? They'll be like, how do you know our scripture is so good? You will blow them away if you just learn these. Did, and, and I'm only telling you, this is how I became acquainted. This is my secret. How I began to learn the Old Testament 
was just reading the New Testament and seeing what it says because this is the best commentary to these truths. And Paul is writing it to the church at Rome, to us Italians, to let us know we're included in the club. It's a big deal. But he uses their scripture. And through the encouragement of the scripture, what does that bring me? I got hope. Baby, I got hope. I know I have hope. Because I am included. By the grace of God, I'm included. And right here, listen, I'm just going to do the verse 13 for today to end. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, that's a great way to end today's sermon. Now, this, this is my, my prayer for you. Now may the God of how much hope? All hope. Fill you with all joy and all peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May that be the benediction for you today. May God fill you with joy and peace in your faith, in your believing, so you can abound in hope. There's nothing better than Christians when they have that joy and that peace. And that hope is an anchor. It's an anchor of our soul. But it, you know, to storms are going to come in this life. They're going to rock the boat. When you got the hope, it's like the anchor that holds you fast. You don't have to worry. I got the hope right here. My hope is in the Lord. And he's, He never lets me down. That's, it's not like hoping in someone who's unreliable. I hope they come through. You know, sometimes when I see this, because of people's experience, they have bad experiences on this earth, hoping that, you know, I don't know, dad would remember it's their birthday and that he would do something nice for them on their birthday and dad always forgotten. And I start telling them about our heavenly father, putting your hope in him, and they're like, well, my earthly father was a letdown. God will probably let me down too. No. Your earthly father may have been a letdown, but let me tell you, your heavenly father will never let you down. We're not talking the same fella. We're talking about God Almighty. And he is, a, he is worthy to hope in. You can hope in him and he never lets you down. He's there. And this is what I want you to go away with today. That hope. Because that, that, that just helps us stay solid. It really does give us that umph we need to do this life. But see, we got to... How, how much hope, the message of hope, how much is that being proclaimed to this next generation right now? Do they get to hear about hope all the time? Not at all. And it makes my heart sad because they're, they're longing for something you guys have had, you know, pretty much growing up. You just thought, hey, man, the Lord's with me. I got his hope. I know he's got, you know, he's there, solid. It's good. You, Some of you are so comfortable because... You have had that hope as an anchor for so long that you never even think about it. You're just like, yeah, of course. It's a, it's a, it's a given, right? Doesn't everyone know that? If everyone knew it, why did he have to write this chapter? I'm just asking. Why did he have to write to the church at Rome these words if they already had it? I submit to you they didn't. I submit to you we have a whole generation that could sure use this message. They could really, really benefit from learning about this hope that we've, I know, I can look around. There's a, sometimes I'm preaching to the choir here. I can see many of you already have that hope. But help me pass the hope to the next generation. They need it so bad. Just like Paul needed to write this to the church at Rome. So they could hear these words. So that would bring them encouragement. And they could have hope. We want, we want to pass this hope on. It's just, it's one of the things, it is so valuable, so precious, so, it is so needed in this next generation. They're getting all sorts of information overload because of all the modern technologies, but they're not getting it with the message of hope. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's causing a lot of discouragement. Kids are taking their own lives. 
because they don't have hope. Let's pass this message on. So this week, do me a favor. You around the table, someone's asking, what, why do you go to church? Because, man, the peace that I get, the, the, the joy, the hope. Let's go to the substance of what our faith has. Those things in the Holy Ghost are so... And maybe the kid next to you or the waiter will be listening going, hey, I don't got that. Where'd you get that? Can I have that? And I mean, how hard is it to share with them that that hope is available to them? It's easy. Sure. It's, it comes in believing. You just put your faith in Jesus. It's, it's like a, a package deal, you know? You, you, you believe in, in the Lord and he just gives you these. These are fruits that come along with, with believing, faith and hope. You get his love, you know, you get his comfort, his leading. And, and we would just share the gospel like that. I think we'd have people coming to us saying, can I sign up? Can I, can I join the group? I'd like to get that. I need that. Let's live like that. And hopefully next Sunday, as we celebrate the Harvest of America, I know our daughter Michelle is there in Arizona and, uh, with Grandpa. And she called my friend Sherry said, hey, do you want to go to Harvest? So my, my daughter is going to go to Harvest Crusade because she heard, oh, they got really good bands. Have you ever heard of this thing, Dad? I'm like, yeah, I've been involved. <laughs> you, what? I remember sitting behind Greg Laurie. We did a Harvest Crusade in Hon Honolulu. And Greg was in front of me. They put a, This is really strange for us. They put all the Hawaii pastors on the stage behind him. So, you know, it was just to like say, hey, we're all united in the Lord. unity of the faith. It was a beautiful statement. But all we had to do is sit there, sing praise songs during the worship time. It was awesome. And I didn't even have to play. I didn't have to leave worship. I got to just listen and sing, you know. It was like, wow, I get the day off, you know. And Greg's next to me, and he gets up, and he goes to stand there, and he starts to preach. And, and I am so, dis I'm so OCD. I look up, and his belt buckle is missed a loop. And, 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 and the whole time I'm looking at him going, he's just a man. He missed a loop. You know, God use this man and don't let him show him from the backside, you know. And, and he's standing there with cameras pointed at him, preaching the gospel. And just the most pure, simple message of, of the hope of what we have as Christians. And so many people came to Christ that day. And now to think, you know, Decades later, my daughter is asking me, have you ever heard of this guy? I want to go to his concert thing he's having. You know, it's like a, a rally. I'm like, yeah, go, go, Michelle. It's going to be great. So be, be in prayer for that because they're also doing satellite broadcasts of the thing. We'll host one at our house. And if anyone else is willing, starts at 2 p.m. And uh, for us here, our time. And so they'll be having it, you know, that's 5 p.m. over in Arizona. And so they'll be having it there in the stadium. And it'll be, you know, broadcast. We'll put it on the big screen and watch it. And if you want to come, we'll just, we're going to do it as a love feast. You know, so bring something, whatever. You, why, I, 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 someone was visiting last week. I said, I do not tell them what to bring. He goes, you're kidding me. How do you guys know what's going to show up? I said, you don't need to know what's going to show up. You just need to know it's going to be really good. Because we have it down, don't we? we? I just say, bring whatever is your best thing that you like to make. You know, we get Angie to do her purple sweet potatoes. And we get, <laughs> I'll do Kamado beef on the Kamado. And then, you know, Don trained me. And, and for those of you who like vegetables, you know, Jan does all these cool side dishes and stuff. And, and it just people just bring what the, what's on their heart. And we have never, ever gone hungry. And one of these things, you know, but, but we'll, we'll just sit around and share, break bread together and, and watch the thing and, and prayerfully hope that somebody that needs to hear the gospel that hasn't, we can invite to come on over and join us for a meal. Because it's a great way to, to bring your, your unsafe friends into an environment where they can just, you know, don't, it's not churchy, you know what I mean? It's not like you took them to church, it's just, you took them to a house to have a meal and hang out. And, and, and listen to this, this concert thing going on with a great preacher. And, and just, you know, we can do that next week. So, so 2 o'clock at my house, come on out, and we'll have a great time. 
and uh, and that'll be after the service. You have plenty of time to go home, make whatever your favorite thing is, and uh, and and we'll get and we'll you know have a great time. It's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful. Might even see my daughter in the audience. I doubt it, but uh, I mean, out of the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the stadium, maybe they'll pan and she'll be waving, you know, on the way back. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the, the privilege that we have that we get to sit on a beach in Hawaii. We get to open the Holy Scriptures and look at them and, and gain encouragement from your Scriptures and hope, Lord, sweet hope. I just pray that you would pour out that hope to a greater measure in each person here. As we go from here today, fill us, Lord, with your joy, with your peace, with your love to overflowing in the Holy Ghost, I pray for each person. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me? We'll sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.